Hi, my name's Matt and welcome to Pony Power. Um, today we're going to be covering rust removal. So here we have a part that is slightly remnants of paint um, and it's quite bad corrosion. Now usually with parts that are knackered and horrible, I used to chuck them in the sandblaster. The problem with chucking them in the sandblaster is that you blast off all the rust and then all the particles break up and then subsequently when you come to blast other parts you're blasting rust into things and um, if you have other steel parts and all the rest of it they're pretty clean you'll see these immediate spots of rust appear after sandblasting yeah. so this isn't too heavily corroded um, I've seen a lot worse but uh, I want to clean this off um, a lot a lot better than this um, so, the way we're going to do that is use electrolysis, the same process you use for anodising and coming up I will have some right, anodising so videos. So to get started, first we need some plastic tubs. I bought these two plastic tubs today from a local store. There's a small one which is going to be our tank and this is going to hold our solution. And this tank, or this plastic bucket, is going to be our extraction. Um, when you do most electrolysis processes with metal, uh, same with anodising, especially with rust removal, what we're going to do here you see little bubbles come off in your solution and they are hydrogen and hydrogen is extremely light and extremely flammable and I don't want that stuff kicking around in here so basically what we're going to do is we're going to have this tank in here full with the solution, I'll show you what the solution is we'll have this tank upturned on the top so basically we'll have that there full of the solution and then we're going to have this tank over the top. It doesn't have to be airtight, hydrogen is the lightest thing there is in the universe, it will all go towards the top and then we're going to cut a hole, we're going to use some ducting, a little packet of ducting here, and basically that's just going to go outside so I can leave this for 24 hours. I don't like the idea of chucking all this outside, you've got a live electricity supply, it's not something really I'm really keen to do. So to start off we need a power supply. Um, this goes up to 20 volts. This is a PS30M. I use this for anodizing. It gives me better control than just say a car battery charger, you know, which basically just supplies around 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 about 12 volts. Um, we have our part that needs to have the rust lifted off it. We have loads of wire so I can choose my colours. We have the ducting, I have a box of alligator clips. So I can choose which one I want. Some of them are rated at different voltages. To be quite honest, all the small ones, including the smallest ones, will be fine for this application. I've got a hole saw drill, because I want to drill a hole in our big tub, this one, uh, to put our ducting in, and that's basically just going to go out the window. Just hang out the window. So this can run for 24 hours. Um, what we're going to use as a solution is we fill our tank up with water and we need to make the water conductive. Basically, you have a complete DC circuit and the negative terminal that comes out to your part. The solution of water with this sodium carbonate basically just makes the water conductive or increases the conductivity of the water higher than normal water is. Then to complete, you have a sacrificial anode, which will just be a plate of steel. There's no point me showing you that. You all know what a bit of steel looks like. Uh, but you can use anything, literally you can use some people on some videos on YouTube that I've seen they use spanners, you can use basically anything that's either iron or steel. Uh, stainless steel is a good idea because with the stainless steel you can have, you can basically clean it off, it won't be immaculate but you can clean it off because there's a lot of build up of this rust, you'll see what I mean when I finish. So basically this is calcium carbonate, some people use detergents, I've seen a lot of American videos they use arm and hammer washing soda. Uh, this says soda ash light, uh, soda ash, uh, it's also called um, washing soda, la -de -da -de -da. In this country, if you use Purcell and Bald and other detergents, I'm not entirely sure what they have in them. So I couldn't recommend, oh yeah, just slap a bit of Purcell and you'll be fine. Um, so, let's get cracking. Right, so I've sorted out the wiring, put these little clips on the end of these wires, kept the same red and black, just for simplicity. Um, I've also soldered these on, so they're not really going anywhere. Um, next thing we need to do 
is cut a hole in our big tub. Now, I've got a circle cutter, and I hate using these bloody things. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop that up with um, some wood underneath. So basically, I've got something solid to drill to. Don't, it's not a good idea to turn it upside down, try and drill through it, you'll crack the whole thing. Saying that, I might crack it now. <laughs> so, we'll see how it goes. Right, just spent 10 minutes looking for my bloody battery in front of my nose. Right, so I'm going to give it a crack. on its ass, so we'll forget that. Right then, take two. Cordless drills are fantastic things for what they are, but just sometimes I just wish they'd never been invented and we just stayed with this because it's bloody perfect. Right then. Can we go through? No, we're not. Stop ringing. As soon as that board kicked out, we're full contact and we're fully through. There's our piece of plastic. This stuff, but these tubs weren't expensive. This stuff isn't exactly brilliant, but uh, for the purposes of you know making a, a hydrogen capturing tank, that sounds well scientific. For a hydrogen capturing tank, there we go. You see, caught it quite nicely. So, that more sawdust of rubbish. That's it I'm doing here. So basically, there's just this bit of um, burnt bits of plastic. It's not the end of the world. Just tear them off. If this was for something more, um, if this had to be more substantial. I was relying on these tubs more, I would go and buy more expensive tubs. Uh, but these cost nothing, I think this is $7.99, the other one was $3.99. Or, I don't know, $5 for the big one, and $2.80 for the smaller one, something like that. You probably get it cheaper in America, jammy sods. But uh, anyway, serves a purpose, we have a hole drilled. And now, we can get our vent and just basically pop that in. Now, it might look a bit scientific, well, I haven't said scientific, but basically all I did was get my hole saw cutter and just put it, get my hole saw cutter and basically just put it, find the one that's a bit smaller, I've got a kit, a cheap kit off eBay, uh, for doing stuff like this. I've got some Makita ones that are a lot better, but there was no need for any of this. So basically just find a bit one a bit bigger. These are quite flexible and stretchy. Um, and you just thread it in. You can't even see. It's my fault. There we go. Right, so basically you just threads in there. There's a lot of slop and play. Like I said, this isn't absolutely necessary. It isn't life threatening is anything like that. I just like the fact that I can leave this indoors overnight, not come in, switch the lights on and everything explodes. The amount of hydrogen given off isn't incredibly, you know, isn't crazy. But better safe than sorry. You know, it's uh another thing is I can use this for other things as well. Uh as kind of like a, a fume cupboard if you want to put it that way. Um, if you work in the sign industry, you all know industry, you all know what a fume cupboard is. Um, I have got some nitric acid, again used for uh, dissolving steel um, particles and other inclusions in aluminium. Um, so if you have aluminium parts that you need to be absolutely spotless, I before you do anodizing, nitric acid is a treat. The problem with nitric acid is it fumes and it is quite nasty. I have all the respirators, um, air bled ones, and what have you. But um, this would make a nice change, you know, to immediately evacuate stuff. And, you know, people might say, oh, well, you've got a bloody thing here, and there might be some over it. Hydrogen. Hi, uh, sorry. 
people might say, oh, you've got your duct over here and it's not exactly funnel shaped and la da da. Hydrogen is the lightest element there is. It is the lightest thing there is. Um, the majority of it will flow out of here. If not, if I have just like a hard spot on a low spot, it will hang up here, then I can just undo that and squeeze it all out. The fact of the matter is I just want to take it away as much as I can from filling up in here. I don't want it to fill up, because if it fills up, like I say, you, you don't want hydrogen in your brew, do you? Right then. Next thing I had to do as well was the smaller tub. I don't know where I put that. The smaller tub was too large, just ever so slightly. So basically, I've just trimmed it crudely. Trim these edges off with a cut off wheel on the Dremel. You didn't need to see that. Just whizzed down it. It was literally about 5mm too big. You could just pinch in the sides. Which means, in a sense, that it would end up locking the outside and then because the sides would slope down the hydrogen would just build up actually no that wouldn't be a bad thing would it anyway it fits better now as you can see like so so we can see what's going on there's enough gap under here like I say our hydrogen rises it doesn't fall so we can have our lead sneaking under there we can have our solution we can have our part and we're ready to rock and roll. So the next thing I need to do is measure out how much water and sodium carbonate I'm going to put in here, get my sacrificial anode, which I'll find, it'll be some probably a thin bit of steel just knocking about. And then we'll start her up and you'll see bubbles hopefully and we'll see how she goes. Alright, so that's two litres. Here's another two going in. Basically, all I'm doing is marking off on my tub where these levels are. Because the other thing is, I used to have a smaller set for this. Um, and then it got all crudded up and then, like a mug, tripped over it, broke it, split it. The water went everywhere. Well, water and the sodium carbonate. So I've got a new packet. So we're just going to fill her up. I'd say we need, I don't know, 10 litres. So I'm going to start filling stuff up and use the uh, kitchen water jug. So I hope I don't get caught using this. And another one. Now, what you'll get is I live in a hard water area. <coughs> so what happens is, is you'll start to get a calcium, I think it's calcium carbonate. Chemistry wasn't my strong point. But um, you can get a build up of calcium carbonate, which makes it go milky. And you get a deposit on the side of your part. Um, you can use deionized water. I've got about 50 litres but for the, for this I'm not really that bothered um, nearly everything that I used to do with my old setup like this um, gets sandblasted anyway and that's the whole point we're trying to get rid of all the uh, all the major really ingrained pitted rust out there the big flakes the big chunks so that doesn't have to go through the sandblasting cabinet so let's crack on that's the eight which I didn't mark because I'm a dummy. And that is the 10, which should be it. So I'll just mark that across the top. Alright, so that's 10 litres, which for this part should be enough. Ta da! Not a problem. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to get ourselves a sacrificial anode, which in this case I will be using something that I find. So I'll find that and then we'll be back to you. So I found a crap plate of steel, that's going to be our sacrificial, 
I've got some welding rod, which we can probably hang something off. I might even just connect the negative terminal straight to the piece. Might be the best way. Just stick that in there. Now, usually what you want is you want your piece suspended in the solution, but to be quite honest, because I say that, most of this is going to be blasted off and it isn't that badly corroded, we can get away with just sticking it in. Now, how do you remember which one it is? Well, we want the rust taking off this, so we're going to subtract the rust, so your negative clip straight on there. Now remember, if you submerge your bulldog clip, that is going to be part of the actual chemistry going on. And then we strap our positive to our anode, and then we need to mix our solution in. So like I said, this is sodium carbonate, I think this costs like six quid off eBay. And there's a life, it's a kilo, there's a lifetime supply in there, you don't need to go crazy with this stuff. Once you use this solution for something like this, it'll be fine to use it again. Now the way it's meant to go is 100 grams ish, and I say ish because it's just off the top of my head, per litre. We've got 10 litres, so you would say a kilo. Well, I think a kilo is a bit overkill. So what we're going to do is... Fill it with about a third. Now, I don't know if that's a third or not. <laughs> Good old guesstimators. Right, so I'll call it that at the moment. If it's enough, we can always stick this in tomorrow and try again. So stick that to one side. Now, what I've done is, because I've sprinkled it in, I've accidentally covered the workpiece, so I don't ever say that I don't edit all the mistakes out because there's a big boo boo right there. So, you notice when it touches water, it kind of turns all crystally, a bit like icing sugar. So, just rub all that off, get a little bit of it off. Take it out, you feel all these crystals in the bottom. With the agitation of the fluid. Now if you're doing anodizing you want agitation which would mean having bubbles. As you can see straight away it's gone cloudy because this is a hard water area. You get calcium carbonate, I'm sure it's calcium carbonate. Um, which will deposit onto the metal as well. So we're all connected up. Ready to stick the lid on. I'll sort myself out and then we'll stick our part in. I need to just file off, you can see in this tab here, on both sides just so we get a good earth. So we'll clamp that on. Like so. Donk her in. Like that. And you can't allow your workpiece to touch the anode. If you do that, the electricity is going to use the easiest path, which will be straight through the tool. And then you won't work. Stick our makeshift fuel cover on. Stick our duct in its hole, like so. And then we'll switch it on. So I'm just lifting the fuel cover just so you can see better. And as you can see, it's a bit milky because of the calcium carbonate because we live in a hard water area. But as you can see, and hopefully here. It's fizzing away nicely. So we'll leave that for 24 hours. We'll come back tomorrow and have a look how far she's come across. All right then, in a bit. All right then, as you can see, we're now back. Well, it's more like 26 hours than 24. Hell of a lot of condensation. My ampage has dropped to about three, it started off about four amps around about there and it's dropped to three over time which is expected. So we'll turn her off and we'll have a look. So 
something off because quite a bit of condensation. It did get rather cold last night. Um, as you can see, it's quite a bit of water, might be fine, that'll evaporate. Christ. Right, I'll bring you in a bit closer. So, as you can see, we have a mess. A real mess. Everything looking alright. And actually, most of this is literally, as you can see, just, I don't know if you can see that, this is literally just pulling away. There's a lot of powder coating, but that's pure steel. That's pure steel. All this flaky, rusty rubbish has just come off. And that is absolutely fantastic. I can hit that with a wire brush at a later date, T tomorrow probably. And um, now our sacrificial anode. <laughs> That's excellent. Look at that. So you got your steel that was here before, and literally all around it, apparently, was touching the tub. This is, and this is what you'll get. This is actually baked on. It's a bit like, it's a bit like barnacles. Um, and you can feel when you put your hand in the solution, you can feel that it's kind of like washing powder. You get that kind of, um, um, what's the word? You get that kind of slippy silkiness. If that is a word. But as you can see. That is very much. Let's see if we can get a good view of that. Look at that. From the real steel to what was sacrificial. And what you can do, there's bits in here. And what I will do is I'll basically get some paint filters and I'll filter this solution back out to get most of this rust residue off and um, put the lid back on it and uh, store it. Just literally put it on one of the shelves and just wait until I need it again. Right then. It might not look fantastic, and you might be saying to yourself, oh, why don't you just use the wire wheel on it before. But the fact of the matter is, is this stuff, the wire wheel's hardly touching it, and it's just, it's just breaking away. Weirdly enough, this is actually quite a good way of lifting off powder coating, but you can see, so these massive flakes, they've got, that's, that's powder coating. It could be actually steel, actually. But that is literally just flaking off. So this is all just steel. See that? Look at that. That has rust impregnated in it. And that's that just falling good. off. So, there you go. All you need is a couple of tubs, some wire, a power supply, a <laughs> car battery. Um, and we'll see. I'll do more of this in the future and put it up on YouTube. Um, 
a lot more corroded stuff. And the other thing is I won't go through every single thing. I'll just say, oh, I'll dip this in the tank. This is what it looks like now. And hey, presto, it looks the way it looks like afterwards. All right then. So, I'm quite chuffed with that. Stick around for some more videos in a bit.